I arrived in this country at six o'clock this morning after being in a flight for 18 hours, two hours from Cape Town to Johannesburg, eight hours from Johannesburg to Dakar, another eight hours from Dakar to Washington DC. First of all, I'd like to say thank you very much to Teresa for the wonderful introduction. It's lovely to have young sisters across the globe. Thank you all for inviting me and honoring my life's work with this National Conference for College Women Student Leaders, Women of Distinction Award. Now, I want to say something about that because it's a long name. <laughs> I was nearly put on the plane to be sent back to South Africa this morning as I staggered into immigration, and I usually get pulled out because I was here in 2001, in, during 9-11 I was here, and they say I fit the profile of the people who bombed the two towers. Now you can try and imagine that, but usually that's the reason why I get pulled out. But this morning I was going to be pulled out because as I came in, tired as anything, and I was helping a mother from Dakar who couldn't speak English, who had a little boy who was whining and crying for his mother, I think, who's already here. And I was so proud of myself, helping her fill the forms, trying to work between the French and the English. And when I got to this man, he looked at me and he said, why are you coming here? I said, I'm here for business. He said, what business? I thought, yeah, I'm going to tell it. I said, I'm receiving an award. He said, what award? <laughs> I said, the Woman of Distinction Award. He said, who's giving you the award? <laughs> I said, oops, as I got all the N's and the AAUW's and all kind of merging into my head. If somebody had sent a little note to my country, say, all you say is, Nick Whistle. I would have been fine. But I'm sure maybe that would have got me to South Africa quickly. Thank you, Jackie, my sister, for making sure that I've traveled here safely. And thank you, Masha, also for being part of the invitation. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to share this award with such distinguished and accomplished women today. I stand here knowing fully well that there are thousands of women out there, women who were denied an opportunity to go to school, women who battle poverty every day, women who work on farms, women who daily tender Mother F, women who have coped with abuse and emotional denigration and yet managed to support, hold, and bear witness to the experiences of their sisters. I feel very much that I'm standing on their shoulders and that this award given to me today is an award that they too deserve. It is therefore in their name and honor that I receive this. It is also in my grandmother's name and honor that I humbly accept this award. Women of my country often say, you strike a woman, you strike a rock. This is a call, this call is associated with the 1957 Women's March that saw thousands of South African women in all colors of our rainbow nation marching to the union buildings of Pretoria protesting against the oppressive past laws. The call reminds us of the strength, the resiliency, and the resolve that women often display in the most trying of circumstances. It speaks of the wars that our women and their sisters globally have to wage against patriarchy, endemic sexism, racism, and the cultural practices that denigrate their spirit and soul. Women of my clan often say, Inimba maibe nyebafazi translated in English as a parent's tender feeling towards a child. 
and I might add as an African woman, any child. This ha often happens when, in my context, a little boy assaults another little boy or a little boy assaults a little girl and the mother of the one who has been assaulted marches out of the house ready to strike and somebody says a call to action but a call to remembering where we come from. Inimba, maibe nimfaz. It's a call that connects us around our umbilical cord. It's a call that talks about to feel for, feel for my child as you would feel for yours. It's a call that says that we're human beings connected. You may never know who is your ancestors under that little thing here that connects us all. It is our seat of our consciousness. It is where all life begins. Inimba, maibe nyibafaz. This highlights in very vivid terms the need to feel for. Over the years, I've discovered that my ability to do what, to do what I do, to connect to narratives of women in Northern Ireland, Aqaba in Palestine, as I would to a woman in Sheks in Guguletu and Langa in my township in South Africa. This comes from the ability to draw my inner resources and harness my compassionate feeling from that saying. Imagine what the world would be if all men were to be taught this basic instinct. I doubt if we would have the same statistics of violence against women, rape, sexual assaults, and human trafficking of girls and women that we have today. In South Africa, it is believed that every 26 seconds, a woman is raped in our country. There are incidences where there was a story of men, six men raping a nine-month-old baby. I've inherited the ability to do what I do because I took the time to learn from the women who have walked the path before me. The drive to do what I do also comes from being reared in a household of very powerful women. In honor of Dorothy Hyde and the great women who have walked this path before us, I tell at this point my grandmother's narrative. My grandmother was born in 1902 and she died at the age of 93 in 1995. She lived in a village where I go too often because that is where the core of my being lies. In Nimba, my a call to that connection. My grandmother lives in a village called Walaza, Walaza Village because my grandfather apparently was a chief, so the village is named after us. I got teased badly at school in the township for coming from Walaza with the school, Walaza Junior School and the Walaza Cafe and the Walaza this. And the kids would say, what else? Are the pots and the pans Walazas too? <laughs> but my grandmother, who lived more than 50 decades after my grandfather died, lived in this village. And it so happened that the the Oka people, the Kosa people from the other village were coming across to live in the place where the Klubis, which is my clan, live. And the men of our clan, who make decisions on everybody's behalf, decided that they would bring the two schools, the school from the other side and this school together, and they hashed a plan and they decided that they would change the name of the school, which is Walaza Junior Secondary School, to something else. I don't even want to remember what that name was. <laughs> My grandmother had that this was done. It was a done deal. It had been passed by those who make decision, and all that was going to happen was that all of a sudden, the post which came to her house, where we read letters for everybody in the village. I learned to read letters as a little girl and translate for men who were older than me that the school was going to be changed. She walked 23 kilometers to the next town because there were no buses. And she walked into the magistrate's office 
She said, you know, we were very afraid of white men. I walked in, I gathered myself, I looked at him straight in the eye, and all I said was, if you change the name of that school which my husband built, I will take every brick and break it down to pieces. It will break my heart, it will shiver my soul, but I will do it.